today we're at Fort DeSoto Park, which is a, a park in Pinellas County. We're Tampa Bay, the Alafaya River, the Manatee River, and the Little Manatee all feed around into the Gulf of Mexico. And so the students were out here today learning about water quality, why it's important to measure, some of the things that impact it. They were snorkeling, looking at the seagrasses and collecting animals to measure the biodiversity. They were also paddling and kayaking um, through the mangroves and the estuaries to look at how the mangroves are very important as recyclers of nutrients in the environment, how they serve as nurseries and habitat. Students that are living in the city, many of them have never even been to the beach. Today was the first time, I'd say about 50% of the students, was the first time they ever snorkeled, the first time they ever saw seagrass, the first time they ever pulled in pinfish or held crabs in their hand. So it's really valuable for them to make that personal connection. And we talk about the data portal, the information they collect here then ties in with what they have their peers collecting at the Galveston Bay Foundation off all around the coast of Texas. It's the Gulf of Mexico Coastal Ocean Observing System. It's one of the 11 regions of the U.S. Integrated Ocean Observing System. We have Florida all the way through Texas. There are a lot of physical oceanographers and meteorologists out there doing their own thing, but it was never connected up. So the early parts of GQs were connecting up those pieces through the data management and communications part. As we've evolved, we're getting more into the biological systems, so bringing in information about harmful algal blooms and how do you mitigate and understand and manage the economic effects and the tourism relationships that are connected to these science issues. A lot of the data through volunteer networks and through students and through school programs fill gaps. They fill important data gaps where the federal or state government might not be able to access on a regular basis. They might not have the funds to process information all the time. So there's really contributing to real data that are important. People care about what they're connected to and by doing these things they learn their environment where they live. They also connect to their community, so communities become stronger. I fell in love with the work because it's, it's very diverse. There's never the same day twice. One day I'm working in academia, with academia. One day I'm helping repair sensors on the sea floor. One day I am at a council meeting for city council women and men and working with city planners on floodplain management issues. Another day, I might be working with Nature's Academy or other nonprofit organizations. It's very enriching. I feel like every day I'm working with these different communities, I'm learning more about the world I live in and, and more of the reasons why and how we need to do more protective and educational activities. I've been involved in education probably since eighth grade, coaching and volunteering for different science kinds of organizations and it's just a natural extension of the research and the science that I've always done and to make it meaningful and useful to people you have to get the kids out there and educate them so they can understand it. Doing is knowledge, doing is learning to love the environment. That's really the fundamental premise of getting kids out in the field is they'll be a part of the environment and be connected to it. Congratulations to Dr. Christina Simonello, the first place Golf Guardian Award winner in the individual category.